one-handed backhand. Little bit of a rare breed on the Pro Tour now, but tons of my clients still have one-handers. And it is a fickle shot, should I say. If you hit it well, if you can tee off on it, it feels great, it looks beautiful, but if you lose a little bit of confidence and you start shanking a few and you're just starting to overthink, to my mind, the one-hander is a little bit more prone to mistakes than the two-hander. And in this video, I'm gonna go over the five most common mistakes on the one-handed backhand and also how to fix them. Okay, so the first common mistake that I'm seeing is that you're a little too close to the ball. And what happens then is if you were to fully square up your racket, you'd actually whiff the ball. So instead, a lot of times the butt cap comes up here and you end up having a little bit of a side swipe even. That can happen if you're not getting to the ball enough, if you can't get down to the ball enough to still have your racket parallel to the ground right here. So as I'm swinging forward and up, I wanna have my racket face fairly parallel to the ground. That inside swipe, to my mind, is a footwork issue. So the key points to fix that mistake is, think about a hitchhiker. And what I mean by that is, your thumb wants to end up pointing behind you here. So if you're waiting at a street and hitchhike, I think that's kind of legal these days. For the backhand, it's great. So again, as you're swinging up, the butt cap points towards the incoming ball and you want to rotate the tip of the racket up so that the butt cap actually points down. That way, you're rolling over the ball, you're brushing up to the ball. And if I'm now sticking my thumb out, I got the hitchhiker. Yep, and what I would do is, just tape yourself and set the ball machine or ask your friends to feed them with as much time in between that even if you're finishing here, you can still correct it just to create that muscle memory. I know it's called a one-hander, but the left hand has actually a huge role to play on the one-hander. So if you're not using your off hand, your swing pass can vary extremely because you're not having the same starting points, drop points, and then pulling forward and up to the contact points that the left hand helped to get into. And at some point, you're just gonna get tired because yeah, this is a lot of effort to do that with just one hand. So the left hand checkpoints need to be on the throat of the racket and you want to actively use it to help you get into your coil. And ideal is if you get your elbow up like this. Imagine you're at a bar. I have the weirdest analogies, but that's really what it is. Imagine you're at a bar, somebody's coming in from behind and you're just going like, uh-uh, no. So you're boxing out here. And what that does is it gets your racket head into a good high position. Your left hand stays on the racket, on the racket drop, and then separates about me at your hip and then it stays down and back. And this is a very active movement. Left hand stays down and back because your left hand acts as a counterbalance to your right arm. Oh. Another common mistake is to catch the ball above your strike zone. So ideally we wanna catch that ball between shoulder and hip. And that is where one-handers have a distinct disadvantage because up here, that's incredibly hard to control. With the two-hander, eh, not great either, but you have a little bit more control. So there's two ways that you can address those higher balls. One is a little bit more advanced. The other one is a little bit better, I think, for newer players. You can take the ball on the rise. And that is a perception and a footwork issue because you have to see how high the ball is coming, how fast it is, and how fast you can get there so you can take that ball in your strike zone. So that's a high one. I need to get up there. And then I also have to recover probably out of a very aggressive court position. Either I'm coming all the way in or I'm moving back. And over three sets, that can be a workout. A little easier is to move back 
and let the ball drop back into your strike zone. Problem with that is a lot of us want to do this, which is when I'm starting to hear the Muppet Show song for whatever reason, I don't know why. So the footwork pattern that you want to use there is split, drop step, turn, bring the left side of your body back if you're a right-hander, cross over, because with a crossover, you can grab a lot more room than just shuffling, and then you add the shuffles on. And ideally, when you're back here, the ball has dropped back down, and it also has slowed down. And that is why hitting the ball on the rise is a little tougher because the ball actually still has more pace as it's coming up from the bounce, as opposed to when it has dropped past its apex. So split step, drop step. Oh, ooh, I could have been faster. So split, drop step, shuffles. And I want to send that ball back high because I want to have time to come forward back to the baseline. Oh, wow. Right. The wild, wild rotation. If you watch Dominic Team, Stan Wawrinka, Federer, or on the women's side, Justina Na or Micah Babel, you would think that they're really getting most of their pop from this almost violent upper body rotation. But if we look a little closer, you'll actually see that as we're making contact on the one-hander, my chest still points sideways. So what you're doing when you're trying to really just generate the power with your upper body is you do exactly what I just did. You almost take the camera out. The key is that you use your legs to load. That is where your power comes from. It's not up here. That is just a function of lowering down and loading your outside leg. So lots of loading with the legs. And you get that by really having a wide stride into the ball. The really heavy rotation up here, a lot of times happens when we're very upright. So load with the legs and your chest, your sternum still points more to the side rather than ending up here. That is also why the left arm is so important. If I'm not using my left arm as the counterbalance, this here happens. You don't want to finish with your left hand here. Your left hand stays down and back. Chest opens up a little bit more to the side. Last biggest issue that I see that a lot of my clients are struggling with is actually the grip. You want to have an Eastern backhand grip. If you have a continental grip and you swing, you load properly, you swing fast, those balls go flying. So the way that you find your Eastern backhand grip is the underside of your index finger and knuckle and the meaty part of the palm need to be on the top bevel here. So meaty part of the palm, heel pad, and I got my knuckle right here. So if I'm now swinging forward, you see that the racket face is squared up entirely to you and you see my knuckles here. Ideally, you don't necessarily want to have this kind of grip. That's a hammer grip and that doesn't give you enough palm on the grip. And that really helps here if you have that little inch in between your middle finger and your index finger to have more stability on the swing.